Hello, Super Traders. We're back with the New York market action, and we are joined by Andrew Lane from Acuity, Acuity Trading. Trading in Barcelona. How is it in Barcelona right now? It's good, actually. We've got some good weather. We've had uh, a torrential uh, rain last week, um, okay. and uh, but it's looking good, and the economy is looking good. The euro is falling, uh, or it has been for the last few months, so Spain's looking good economically as well. All right, oh, so great. weather and economic, that's all we need, right? You're right, you can buy more paellas now. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. So, Andrew, what do you have for us? What are some uh, very important pinpoints to talk about today? Interesting, yeah. I, I wanted to uh, begin the session, as always, talking about what's happening in the news. Um, just to remind to your viewers, what we do is tackle uh, the issue of infobesity. Um, too much news out there for everyone to read, so we read it for you. Um, so today we're going to be talking about the oil markets, and as you've probably seen, uh, oil has jumped by 5% already today. Um, but for users of Acuity data, that would have been no surprise. Of course. So I will be talking about that. Have you guys been uh, looking at the oil markets? How you know, just a little bit. Uh, just a little bit. How, how can we not look at the oil prices today? Right. It's amazing. This is... Uh, uh, we had tremendous movement today in oil prices. We hit uh, f almost 53 US dollar today, which is 6.5% uh, uh, up, upward movement. Uh, and it's uh, right after oil uh, appreciation uh, or oil uh, consecutive, uh, three or four days consecutive gains. And after these gains, we, we saw a very sharp upward movement, of course, after the news. And I think you you have better sense of what happened uh, during uh, the last uh, few uh, few days. Yeah, so um, to review what's been happening politically in the situation, we see in Yemen um, an attack uh, by the rebels on the uh, port of Aden. Now, Yemen in itself isn't actually a huge producer of oil. We're looking at about 440,000 um, barrels of oil a day. But what is important is the stretch of water that's just by Yemen, where 4 million barrels of uh, oil pass every day. Mm -hmm. And if that was shut down, those 4 million barrels of oil would have to pass via South Africa, greatly increasing the cost of producing oil. Um, so, and that stretch of water is called the Bab El Mandeb. So um, today, Saudi Arabia and uh, some of the other uh, Sunni countries um, started bombing uh, Yemen to prevent the uh, fall of the president. And that's led to a 5% rise in prices. Now, using acuity data, what is interesting is that we can see a rise in sentiment uh, uh, for oil uh, coming from the last few days. And I'll just bring that up for you. Uh, Great. I would love to, to see it. Okay. So I can tell you that for four million, four million barrel per day, it's almost uh, 4% of uh, the global production, oil global production, of course. Uh, and this is exactly the percentage of uh, uh, appreciation by oil prices today. So it's in line with the news. Uh, yeah, and I think you've also got to look at the effect on Saudi Arabia having uh, a hostile government right next to its oil producing region mm -hmm. will also endanger supplies. And of course, Saudi Arabia has been pumping more oil than it has in, uh, in a long, long time, which has been pushing pressure onto Iran, uh, which wants to cut back supply. So uh, we have this, um, I would say, uh, war of sentiment in the Middle East. Uh, which is looking to push down and push up prices. And basically here at Acuity, we can cut through all that and find out what the market is uh, feeling overall. So okay. um, can, you, can your viewers see my screen now? Y yes. Yeah. What, 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 can we, what, we, what are we seeing here exactly? What are the lines, the red line and the, uh, the blue lines are presenting? Yeah. Okay, great. Let me take you through it. So um, here we have a chart of how people are feeling towards crude oil for the last 90 days. And as you say, uh, we've got blues and red lines going up and down. Now, 
I, pretty massive changes throughout. Yeah. Yeah. So sentiment oscillates back and forth, um, and that's the blue line going up mm -hmm. and down. And wh what you can see in the last few days is um, sentiment's really been picking up. Right. But what I do, uh, a lot of traders do, to try and understand the average of sentiment, how it's moving, is to take a, a moving average of our sentiment. So uh, we're looking at, uh, in the red line, a seven-day moving average of sentiment. And you can see that's sharply moving up in the last 24 to 48 hours uh, as we see fear in the oil uh, and therefore pushing prices higher. And if you look up to the right-hand side of my chart, you can see we, although uh, we have a bullish daily uh, trend for prices, um, we still feel that there will be a bearish tendency uh, intraday. That is Interesting. That is to say that perhaps our indicators are suggesting that uh, oil has been overbought and there'll be some retracement. Absolutely. Wow. Uh, I can tell you that it's perfectly uh, sitting with our, uh, with our trading activity as we forecasted that once oil is going to hit 52, 53 US dollar per barrel today, we are going to take it to the downside. We are going to take put position, speaking about binary options. And uh, actually, it was in line with your uh, sentiment, with your base sentiment, and of course, overboard values. Perfect. Great. That's brilliant to hear. Um, so I thought I would then uh, take it over to the euro dollar today and look at how this is affecting the, the principal currency pair. Um, I'll uh, come and talk to that now. Uh, moving over to the euro dollar. As you can see, we've got price in green, uh, the moving average of sentiment in red, seven days, and it's really very predictive at the moment, sentiment of what is happening. You can see the red line moving down before the green and then moving up before the green as well. We can so see that seeing... it is correlated. The, the, the correlation is actually very accurate during the last few days. Indeed. Yeah, we're seeing sure a great correlation. Nice. Um, and we should see, uh, we're still seeing a bullish uh, indicator for intraday for today and also going in uh, to tomorrow. Uh, but generally, our long term provision, which we're looking very long term, is pretty much neutral. There's still a, a bit of downward pressure on, uh, on the euro dollar. So we could see this as a, a very limited retracement. So you, would you say that uh, we are going to see 105 again and maybe uh, the round number, one, one to one exchange rate? I certainly feel the long term, let me bring back my uh, uh, face. Um, I certainly <laughs> feel the long term uh, is towards uh, the downward uh, trend. Um, but for the, the time being, we still have a retracement that has strength going upwards. Okay, we, we have also uh, positive momentum uh, coming in from the manufacturing uh, manufacturing PMI's uh, results recently from uh, German, from French, and we also have some other uh, key economic events for Europe that's coming in a bit better than, than expected, mm -hmm. uh, presenting a temporary bullish uh, bias. And of course, we, we were bullish uh, on the euro uh, during the, the last couple of days. But as, as you mentioned, on the long term, we are still bearish. We still know that we, we, we don't have any solution for, for or real solution for the Greek crisis. And maybe we are going to see default by April 20, um, default in, uh, in the government, uh, and the government doesn't have money to pay uh, wages, salaries, and so on. So basically, we, we are also bearish uh, on the euro for the long run. The um, interesting part of what you were just saying is about uh, the Greek issue. Um, and there will be a lot of volatility around the event. I personally feel that uh, we have a, a market game of uh, chicken. Who's going to blink first, essentially, Correct. between the Greeks and the Germans? And uh, one interesting aspect of this is to watch is looking at fear, or we call volatility within the news, high extremes of negativity. So here at Acuity, we'll be measuring that on the euro dollar and the euro especially, um, looking at how worried investors are going up until the, uh, the event of uh, April 20th. Yeah, and we can see that uh, we, we have major fear in the biggest uh, holders of Greek debt. 
62% uh, of this debt uh, belongs to Euro area governments and 10% uh, uh, to the IMF and 8% to the ECB. Uh, so and and of course uh, Germany is one of the major creditor uh, of uh, Greece, and I think they the, they have uh, they have some fear to. Uh, yeah, uh, this is the the game of chicken. Greece is saying, look, you can't let us go bust. We've got uh, you've got too much of our debt. We go bust, then we'll see Italy, Spain, Portugal, Ireland, and eventually France mm -hmm. go bust, and the whole yeah, European the Union way. fall apart. Yeah. Uh, Germany, especially the finance minister saying no we can manage this Greece doesn't have to be a part of the European Union uh, and the key to this is, is whether the markets believe Germany or Greece mm -hmm. so I, I think we, we have a, a big challenge here uh, with respect to this particular uh, event and that's why euro uh, should remain under selling pressure for now and of course we are expecting high volatility in the upcoming uh, months now I want to take you to another subject. As, as you mentioned uh, in our previous uh, session, we had a discussion about the NFP and uh, the pickup in the interest uh, by, by the, of course, market participant interest in this particular uh, print. And we, we saw the print, it was uh, brilliant. It was almost uh, 300,000 uh, jobs that added to the US market. and and it pushed the US market to the upside, the, the index says, and the US dollar collapsed. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing, the impact was really, really amazing, and it pushed the US dollar uh, to a bearish bias right now, a massive correction, and it is uh, still, uh, we can see the impact uh, in the market until these days or until this uh, hour. Yeah, I, I don't know if you remember the chart I showed you in the last, uh, the last session. We looked at NFP and how the world was getting very, very positive, um, and it was a uh, it was a very interesting um, data because when it comes to economic indicators, acuity can measure how people are feeling. We can't predict what is happening. We can very much help with euro dollar by looking at sentiment, how people are feeling towards euro dollar. But when it comes to economic indicators, very individual case. But in this case, we were firstly we were measuring correctly how the crowd were feeling. And the crowd were very, very correct. And uh, the NFP figures came out exactly how Acuity was predicting. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. And of course, it's, uh, it's very important to understand the feeling as you know, you, you know what to expect or you know to expect, at least you know to if whether it's you can ex way. exactly whether we have a low, where, where, whether we are going to expect low volatility or high volatility in the market. And that's how you can select your trading strategy. It is very important to understand those measures in order to adjust your trading activity uh, in accordance to the market participant sentiment and the overall uh, market sentiment for each and every economic indicator or each and every asset. Indeed, you can't trade this market today if you don't understand what the rest of the world is doing and thinking. Okay, so one last question. Uh, we had the uh, incoming print uh, 15 minutes ago and I, I, th I thought that it's going to be one of the key events Although it's, uh, we have it uh, on a weekly basis, the unemployment ca uh, claims came in uh, better than expected, uh, lower than the previous uh, week, and of course lower than analysts' expectation. 282,000 uh, unemployment claims, uh, and the prediction or the estimation was to 291,000. Uh, and this so it's, just came in now? Yeah, 15 minutes ago. Time. Correct, and it's mm -hmm. better than expected, and... Uh, whether it's going to uh, affect the market or not, I think that it has a major impact, uh, at least and as for now, as the US market is sitting around this, uh, a significant support level between 2040, 2050, speaking about the S&P. Uh, so do you have any information about this particular event or uh, what, well, what is the sentiment around the, the market? Yeah, I mean, looking at, you mentioned the S&P 500 there. Um, about 24 hours ago, we got a sharp sell-off in, well, I say sell-off, but sell-off in sentiment. Yeah. Um, and we still we'll have a very bearish uh, indicator towards intraday and daily uh, towards the S&P 500. Um, that's, it's a very interesting um, 
uh, indicator at the moment uh, because you say the positive jobs coming through, um, dollar strengthening, the, but then again we have the issues in uh, the Middle East. Uh, it seems though one one after the other countries are flaring up. Um, so yeah, the S and P is falling off, and we still believe the S and P 500 is going to be looking bearish for the time being. All two indic all two three indicators we have is looking bearish. That's our view as well. But I I hope I hope that the U S market will bounce back. So I can have a great, great opportunity to take it to the downside uh, to the second quarter of 2015. I'm a trader. Yes, yes, I'm a trader. And what, what can I do? I cannot help it. Uh, so I'm looking for the right entry point uh, to the bearish buy assault. Uh, and we also have, uh, have a sell off in the market. And I can see some institutional activity during uh, the last few days. I saw institutional selling at the end of uh, the, trade, the U.S. trading session. It is very clear that uh, we are going to see a correction, but uh, hopefully uh, we are going to see a, a, sli a slight rebound to the upside, a pickup in, or pullback in prices, so I can take it to the downside and join the bloodbath that is going to happen in the market very soon. <laughs> It'll be interesting. And he's smiling Imagine. throughout it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> throughout the bloodbath. <laughs> Marching all the way. <laughs> but it's that's coming, how you... I'm sure it's coming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, Andrew, it was very interesting today. As always, thank you very much for joining us today. And I hope to see you soon. I hope to. All right. Thank okay. you, Andrew Lane. Bye -bye. Enjoy the Barcelona and the sun. <laughs> okay, great. Okay, right now we are going to take a short break and we will come back with market action. We have great, great stuff for you guys.